Professor Ferreras Comella, thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you, it's my pleasure. How does the Spanish Constitutional Court's handling of the Catalan question apply to other regions in Spain under debate? Well, there was lots of controversy in 2010 when the Constitutional Court um, had to decide whether the Catalan Statute of Autonomy was constitutional or not, because there were other statutes of autonomy which were in part uh, similar to the Catalan Statute, which no one had questioned. So the question is whether what the court said about the Catalan Statute applies to the others. And uh, the, the quick question is yes, it does apply to them, in particular because in many, many instances what the Spanish Constitutional Court did was to hold that particular provisions of the Catalan Statute were okay, provided they were interpreted in a particular way. So that interpretation can also be extended to the other statutes of autonomy, even if no one had challenged them. Could you elaborate on the paradox created by the popular vote and result contradicting the constitutions in democratic countries? Right, this is a very uh, difficult question, which of course was, uh, was discussed during, during the period when the Catalan statute was challenged before the Spanish Constitutional Court. I think two, two important things have to be borne in mind. The first thing is that if uh, a region is making decisions that go beyond the kinds of matters that the region is entitled to decide, then it doesn't matter how many people participate. Uh, uh, that norm, that law can be struck down uh, for the simple reason that it is regulating things that are beyond the sphere of competences of that subject. So it doesn't matter how many people participate. Now, the other thing to say is that maybe it's advisable for a constitutional court to decide whether a law is constitutional or not before the people have spoken in a referendum. So in the case of Spain, it would have been much better for the Spanish Constitutional Court to be asked to rule on the validity of the new Catalan statute before the Catalans were uh, asked to participate in the referendum. Right? Uh, unfortunately, it was the other way around, and then we had first the people speaking and afterwards the court speaking. So this change would be a good change to introduce. If a referendum were to be granted to Catalonia, what are some problems that you foresee on the legitimacy and the result of the referendum? Right. Well, first of all, it's very unlikely, extremely unlikely, that uh, the Spanish government will ever authorize a referendum on independence to be held in Catalonia. If it did authorize that referendum, I suspect that the main problem would be the uncertainty about the meaning of the people voting yes in favor of independence. Uh, probably um, the, the understanding that would prevail uh, would be that uh, the Catalan people were expressing their preferences and that the Spanish authorities had to find a solution to the situation generated by the expression of those preferences, but independence was not necessarily the, 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 the answer to the problem. And if that is so, when people vote and they know that they're voting yes to independence doesn't necessarily mean that independence is going to be the, the, the solution. Uh, then they are tempted to vote in favor of independence even if they don't really want the independence of that region. So I think that's the, the tricky question. How, how exactly are we going to understand the meaning of, of a vote in favor of independence? We understand the question, but we don't understand the, 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 the pragmatic impact of a vote saying yes.